Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can fix an image where the subject is backlit and where you have blown out highlights. Before we get started with this video tutorial, let's look and see what it is that we're trying to achieve. This is the image that we're going to go for, but this is the image that we're going to start with. You can see that this little kitten has been photographed with backlight. He was sitting on my hand and I had it stretched out in front of me and I really wanted to catch him in some sunlight. But what's happened is that we've actually ended up with a lot of blown out highlights here. And we're going to see how easy it is to achieve this kind of result from that same photograph in Lightroom, getting rid of the blown out highlights and bringing back detail in the image. So to get started, let's go back to the original image. I'm just going to make another virtual copy of this one so that we can work on a virtual copy. And we'll start by taking this into the develop module. Well, actually I'm already here in the develop module, but let's just hide all of the film strip and let's get to work on the image. Up here is our highlight clipping. So I'm just going to turn that on and we can see that we actually have some already clipped highlights. Not a big surprise really, but a lot of the rest of this image is quite dark. So I'm actually going to increase the exposure even though that's going to result in some even worse clipped highlights. But I'm looking for some good exposure in this area here. Now having done that, the next thing I'm going to do is to bring down the highlights because I want those highlights back and that's dealt with those highlights. Now let's find a white balance point. Let's find the whites in the image and I'm going to hold the Alt or Option key here. I'm going to drag in a direction that's going to give me whites. Now I don't have any whites right now so I'm going to need to go to the right. If I already had whites I'd need to come to the left to try and get rid of them. But I want just the beginnings of whites in this image and just underneath that point. So I'm just going to bring this back to about plus 20. No, about plus 12 is just giving me the beginnings of some clipped highlights down here. So that's a good white point for the image. With shadows, I probably don't want to do much at all. I don't want to bring detail out of the background because I used a very wide aperture to try and make it so that you really couldn't see what was behind him. So bringing these shadows up is only going to make the background even more apparent and I don't want to do that. So I'm going to set that back to zero. I don't think I'm going to get much out of the shadows at all. Blacks, I do want a black point. So again, I'm going to hold the Alt or Option key. I'm going to look and see if I have any blacks. Well, I don't have any blacks right now so I'm going to head to the left and I'm just starting to see some blacks appearing in the top left corner of the image. Don't want too much but I do want a little bit and obviously it's not in the area of the kitten so I'm not worried that I'm plugging the shadows there because they were details that I wasn't concerned with anyway. So let's just let go of that. So this is where we are right now. Now we could go any direction on clarity. If we wanted to make the image a little bit softer, we could move down on clarity to make him softer and fluffier. And if we wanted to draw attention to him a little bit, we could increase clarity. Now I'm going to opt for the increased clarity, probably around 10 or 12, not a lot, but just a little bit. Now I want to light his face a little bit better, but before I do, let's just crop this. And I cropped to a one-to-one -one ratio before because I thought that that was quite a nice crop for this image. So I'm just going to select one-to-one -one here and then just position him in here. I'm concerned just to get the tip of his whisker here in the image. So this is a pretty good crop. So now let's have a look at lighting his face. And I'm going to do that with a radial filter. So I'm just going to click here on the radial filter and drag a shape across his face. Now if you don't have Lightroom 5, so you don't have this radial filter, you could get the same result with the adjustment brush in an earlier version of Lightroom. So just because you don't have the radial filter won't preclude you from doing this adjustment. So making sure that this is centered over his face and because this is a radial filter right now, whatever we do with it is affecting the outside of the image and we want it to affect the inside. So I'm going to invert this mask and I'm going to make sure that I have a fairly good feather on it because I want the effect to gradually disappear, not be sharp. 
and I'm just going to increase the exposure just the tiniest bit here just to light his face a little bit better and I might also look at perhaps some additional highlights I might look at a little bit of additional contrast whatever I need to just make his face be very much the center of attention here but for me I think that just a little bit of exposure and a little bit of highlights is all I need um, it looks like I've got a legacy noise adjustment there so I'm just taking that out so I'll click done and the last thing I'm going to do is draw attention to his eyes because he has the most amazing blue eyes so for that I'm going to use the adjustment of brush click on it click on the eye I'm going to use auto mask and a flow of a hundred here I want a slight feather and just a reasonable size brush I'm going to press the letter O to bring this overlay into view so I can see exactly what I'm selecting and because the blue eyes are so obviously blue and the area around them is not the auto mask is just helping me make this selection but you could do it without auto mask if you wanted to I just suggest that you turn the view on of this overlay so you can see what you're selecting I'm going to press O to turn it off again now I want to increase the exposure because I want to make these a bit lighter because I know what's going to happen as soon as I add clarity I'm going to lose that lightness so let's just add the clarity and you'll see that they darken up quite a bit when we add clarity now there is a little bit of noise in here um, but this noise adjustment is removing it I'm actually going to put it back in I'm going to set the noise reduction here to about 50 and that's going to remove some of the noise in the eyes and just make them a little bit shinier in fact I think I can go a little bit higher there since the only place I'm reducing noise is in the eyes I might look at a little bit of extra contrast again additional contrast is going to kill the brightness so I may have to bring the exposure up to compensate for that and perhaps a little bit of extra saturation let's just click done and let's zoom back out again to make sure that we haven't overdone the effect now I actually photographed this little guy and I know that that's not too much of an effect because he really does have the brightest of blue eyes now before we finish the only other thing that's concerning to me is that there's some green fringing here this is chromatic aberration it's a green fringe caused by bending of light so I'm just going to close down the basic panel here and I'm going to lens corrections and I'm going to color because that's where I'm going to affect this now if I click to remove chromatic aberration that's fine but it's not actually working on this so it's not actually doing any good for this area which is my cause of concern so I'm going to take the fringe color selector and I'm just going to click on the green area and when I do you'll see that the green hue slider here actually starts to move because it's picking up the area that I'm selecting and it's going to remove the green color from it so I'm just going to see if I can get a good selection here to start removing some of the green I might need to go to a two to one view of the image to actually be able to find the green pixels that I want to get rid of the color in and there's not much green in the rest of the image so adjustments that I make here are not going to overly affect the other areas of the image I think I'm going to have to do some of this manually so I'm just stretching this green hue slider to try and cover the worst of the green areas so I'm just going to click done and zoom back out again and just make sure that when I enable and disable this lens correction I'm not affecting anything else in the image so I'm just going to turn this off and then turn it on again and just make sure that any changes I see are not in an area other than the area that I wanted to get rid of the green color in anyway and I'm not seeing that so now to finish off I'm going to add a vignette around this image because the corners are pretty dark anyway and I just want to enhance that so I'm going to close lens corrections down let's go to effects and let's just add a small amount of highlight priority post crop vignette 
post crop vignette just means that it's going to appear on the cropped image not the original size image which of course was a landscape image and highlight priority is just a really good choice for this image color priority is not giving me quite the color that I want in the corners and paint overlay well paint overlay would work too but I prefer where I can to use highlight priority I just think it's a better vignette if it works for you so there is our image let's just roll back and see what it looked like when we created the virtual copy well there's the virtual copy and here is our finished image we've actually brought detail back into the kitten's face sent the background to where it should be right to the background and created a nice compelling little image from what was a very severely backlit image with a lot of highlights destroyed in the process. I'm Helen Bradley thank you for joining me for this video tutorial look out for more video tutorials here on my YouTube channel and consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released and visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator and a whole lot more.